Let's move on to item number 11. What is the prime factorization of 240? Is it A, B, C, or D? What do you think? So when we speak about prime numbers, these are whole numbers that greater than or equal to two that have exactly two positive factors, one and itself. So for this case, we could express 240 as the product of 24 and 10. For the 24, you could actually check that it's equal to two cubed times three. Anyway, you could check like two cubed is eight and three. So eight times three will give you 24. So 24 has a prime factorization of two cubed times three. For 10, it's two times five. You could also utilize the factor three if you want to. So from here, you could see that you, you can still get the product of two cubed and two, which is two to the fourth, because if you multiply numbers having the same base, then you copy the common base and you simply add their exponents, three plus one, four. And you simply copy the three and five. Hence, if you answered letter A, Congratulations, you got it right. Number 12. What value or values of x satisfy x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0? Is it negative 5, negative 2, negative 5, 2, 5, negative 2, or 5, 2? What do you think? So we could actually approach this through factoring. So if you factor x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0, you could see that it's actually the product of x plus 2 and x minus 5, and equating that to 0. And remember, we have the zero property of multiplication. If you have these two factors that, is, that are equal, whose product is equal to 0, then either the first or the second is equal to zero. Hence, if you equate the first factor to zero, that's x plus two equals zero, and adding both sides by negative two, you have x, x sub one equals negative two. And if you have the second factor, x minus five equals zero, then adding both sides by five, you got x sub two equals five. Hence, if you answered C, you got it right. Negative two and five. Number 13. The ratio of Kim to Jay's money is four is to nine. If Kim has 324 pesos, how much money does Jay have in Philippine pesos? Is it 692, 696, 724, or 729. So from here, uh, we will imply, we will use the concept of direct proportion. So let X be J's money in Philippine peso. So this is the ratio of Kim to J's, that's four is the nine. And that is 324 is two X. Here, Kim to J, here is also Kim is two J. And remember in a proportion here, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So the extremes are the ones that are in the outermost portion. So we have four times X, so we have four X. And we have nine times 324 here. And nine times 324 is 2,916. And the 4x was just copied on the left-hand side. Dividing both sides by 4, we have x is equal to 729. So j has 729 pesos. Letter D. Okay. Number 14. If a certain amount of money will be divided equally by eight people, 
then each one, then each uh, will receive 600 pesos. How much will each one receive if the same amount will be shared equally among four people? Is it 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, or 1,450? This is actually an inverse proportion problem, and um, I will approach it using this solution. So remember, if there are eight people and each will actually receive 600 pesos, so that means that the total amount of money there is, is eight times 600 pesos, which is 4,800 pesos. Meaning to say, this is the total amount that was divided equally among eight persons. That is why each one received 600 pesos. And since the total amount now is 4,800 pesos, and since there are four people who will share this said amount, then 4,800 pesos divided by four, then each one will get 1,200 pesos. That is letter B. Okay, item number 15. Angeli and Bea will share 784 marbles in the ratio 7 is to 9. How many marbles will Angeli get? Is it 343, 351, 390, or 441? What do you think? So for this, this is an example of a partitive proportion problem. So Anjali will get seven parts and Bea will get nine parts. And that tells us that there are 16 parts in all. And out of the 16 parts, Anjali will get seven out of these parts. Hence, we will get seven sixteenths of the 784. 784 divided by 16 is 49 here. And that means 7 times 49 or 343 marbles. That is letter A. Or if you wish, another way of interpreting the problem would be, since there are 784 uh, in all, and there are 16 parts, so 784 divided by 16, that tells us that there are 49 parts. I mean that there are 49 marbles in a part. And since Angie will get seven, so that's why seven parts. So seven times 49, which gives us still 343 marbles. 16. A square has a perimeter of x squared minus 4x plus 4. Which of the following represents the side of a square? Is it A, B, C, or D in this case? Okay. Remember that the formula for a perimeter of a square is 4s. And since the perimeter is given to be x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 4s, then to solve for s, we will divide both sides with 4. And if you do, if you do this now, if you have x squared over 4, that's 0 0.25. That's in, in fact, 1 fourth x squared or 0 0.25 x squared. Negative 4x divided by 4, it's negative x. 4 divided by 4, it's plus 1, equals S. Remember, the usual mistake committed here is that they divide only here, but the rest were neglected. But be very careful. 4 here is a divisor of all the terms in the numerator. So if you answered letter A, you got it right. 17. Which of the following is not a subset of x, which is equal to the set of x such that x is a prime number? Take note in some books, they use colon. 
in some books they use vertical bar but they all mean such as in this uh for this case so is it a null set is it two three five three five seven or one two three until nine what do you think remember so we have here prime numbers and we have to remember that since a is a null set a null set is a subset of any set that's why A is in fact a subset of this set X. Two, three, five, these are all prime. Three, five, seven is uh, all of them are also prime numbers. But in this case, one, two, three until nine, it's not. It has to be letter D. How come it's not? Because one is not a prime number. So it has, it is not a subset of this. Also nine is a composite number. Hence, it is not a subset of X, of set X as well. Letter D. I hope you got it right as well. Number 18. If A equals a set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, and B as a set containing 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, then what is a union B? Is it let the set, uh, the elements in set, uh, in uh, letter A, B, C or D. I hope we understand the concept of union. Speaking about union, my friends, A union B is the set of all X such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. This is in fact telling us that to get the union of two sets, of two or more sets, what we have to do is simply combine all the terms into one set. And if ever there are duplications, be reminded that we only write them exactly once. We do not write the elements twice, thrice, and so on. Okay? So from here, so I will list this. One, two, three, four. That's why I have here one, two, three, four. Also, I will write two, four, six, eight, but we have already the two, four here. So I just have to write the six, eight, nine that's remaining here. So there should be nine there. And if that's the case, it's in fact letter E. The correct answer is not found among the choices. Okay. So I was able to see a correction within the PowerPoint and the correct answer here is E, um, because in the PDF copy I provided, if the correct answer is not found among the choices, you have to write E. Thank you. 19. What is the area of a triangle with sides 3, 4, and 5? Is it 6, 7.5, 10, or 12? For here, if you are just keen enough, you could actually see that this is in fact a right triangle because it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. That is, if you get the sum of the squares of the two legs, so we have 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's 9 plus 16 or 25. It's equal to the square of the hypotenuse, 5 squared or 25. So we could actually see then that the three here could serve as a base and this four here could serve as the height. But if you interchange the base and the height and apply it in the formula, no worries. You will still get the same answer. So area is equal to base times height divided by two. So base three, height four. So three times four all over two. And that gives you 12 over two, which is six. So the area of this is six square units. Letter A. Moreover, class, if you use the other formulas, like example, if, if you didn't realize that it is a right triangle, you could actually still use the concept of Heron's formula, if you wished. And in fact, there are many ways of finding the area of a triangle. Number 20. A wealthy man divided his wealth among his four sons, Anjo, Ben, and Chris gets 
Anjo, Ben, and Chris gets two fifths, one six, and three sevens, respectively, while Don gets the rest. Who has the smallest share among these four children, among these uh, four sons? Anjo, Ben, Chris, or Don? So from here, to get the fraction that Don gets, you have to add the, uh, the parts that will be the, uh, received by the other three sons. And in this case, if you add all of them and subtract it from one, which is the total or 100%, then Don actually gets one over 210. So from here, and share is two fifths. Um, for easy comparison of fractions, because anyway, we have your calculators. We will convert them to decimal. So and to share of two fifths is 0.4. For Ben's share, it's one six, which is approximately 0.17. For Chris's share, um, to by the way, to convert this to decimal, so you have to divide the numerator with the denominator. So one divided by six, that's approximately 0.17. For Chris's share, three sevens, three divided by seven, which is 0.43. And for Don's share, 1 over 210, it's approximately 0 0.05. So clearly, if we know the concept of um, comparing fractions, you could actually see that um, since, they're new, they're, since their uh, whole number of parts are all zeros, we can compare now their tens digits, tens digits. So we have 4, 1, 4, 0. Clearly, Zero is the smallest, and therefore Don's share is in fact the smallest. Letter D, 